Tommy's response when a fan suspected he was Jisoo's secret lover was epic laughing my MFA off. Harem answered some questions on her live and I have a few comments on that. Hi guys, Love After Divorce Season 4 is over but the cast members keep giving updates that's making fans happy and excited. Here are the latest updates about all the members. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support. Now let's dive into it. Benita, Ricky, and Dewey celebrated their birthdays. Benita met Jerome's parents in July. They celebrated her birthday together with a few friends. Since they had to stay away from public eye to avoid spoilers, they both stayed at home together a lot, meaning they've been spending a lot of quality time together and they both cooked for each other a lot. For her birthday, Jerome made seaweed soup, he learned his mom's famous pasta sauce and he made it for their 100th day celebration. To cap it off, at night, they put on facial masks together in pajamas with Benita sitting on Jerome's laps, they took a cute selfie OMG. How sweet. Although I'm wondering where they were in this photo. Was it on Benita's couch, did Jerome change his black couch, or are they in a swanky hotel? Or could it be that Jerome upgraded to a bigger place? We'll just have to wait and see. Also, in September, they had a blast at Disneyland with Jerome's sister and nephew. What's really funny is how Benita, who used to be quite private, is now not only more comfortable with showing more of her life in public, but also matching up to Jerome's goofiness. Just check out their cuteness in this video, she is dancing and rubbing his head. They're absolutely adorable. This right here means this couple is signed sealed and delivered. All we're waiting for now is wedding bells. Jernita's adventures continued after showing up at Dewey's spot to show support to Dewey and his band, in late September. They also showed up and showed out in November at Black Swan spot during their US tour. You've gotta love this couple and how they show support for each other and others. Check out Benita getting an autograph from one of her favorite celebrities, she even said her two-hour wait was worth it. Before the final episode of the show aired on October 22, 2023, remember Jernita had been trying to keep a low profile by staying home 24-7 to avoid giving out spoilers. However, things got a little complicated when Benita tried to take her friend out before the show was over. They wanted to show Benita's good friend, who was visiting from Korea some parts of Orange County. They figured they'd go to places with no Koreans, but failed. According to Jerome, California has Koreans everywhere. So they got caught by a lot of people that day. Luckily, none of them released the pictures they took together until the show ended. Jerome took the chance to say thank you to those people that they met that day. Dewey also celebrated his 40th birthday sometime in August. Jernita, Ricky, Sora, and Jackson, Sora's son, were all at Dewey's place to celebrate with him. He shared that it was pure joy he experienced with members on that day. He said their visit to his place in August for an episode screening of the show, coupled with his birthday celebration was epic. Check out the cake guys. It says, Call of Dewey. How cool is that aw? They also recently celebrated Ricky's birthday. Dewey and Jernita showed up for Ricky's big day and celebrated with him at Dave and Buster's. The caption on their photo showed they had so much fun. It's nice to see Ricky having fun and getting some love from the LA members. The interesting thing is there were also two female friends with them. Lots of fans were speculating that the ladies might be Dewey and Ricky's girlfriends. What do you all think about this guys? I'm quite sure Dewey has said many times that he isn't in a relationship. Although his latest story on IG is a bit suggestive as if he is on a date. You all better believe that I zoomed in on that photo but saw nothing. Maybe some of you hackers can get clues through that reflection on the glass lol. As for Ricky, I'm not so sure but it'll be nice to see them both in solid and committed relationships. His latest post shows that he's on a trip to Temecula wine country. We hope they find joy in dating again soon. Speaking of dating again, let's shift gears to Jisoo. Jisoo is in love y'all. She's very generous with teasing us with videos and pictures like this. And this. 
And this, like, Jisoo is mysterious and I am all for this. I like it that she's keeping us guessing who she's with. One fact remains though. Her boyfriend is not Tom. She clarified this when she was on Tom's IG Live. She said she is happily dating and in love with her new boo. The video to the live will be in the description box below. The funniest and most epic reaction I've ever seen from Tommy so far was his response to a fan's comment when Jisoo posted the picture of her shadow with her boyfriend. The commenter said, the shadow looks a bit like Tom, Uncle Tom. This made Tom respond and say, yup, he is my shadow twin brother. <laughs> you how did Tommy even come up with that response? I died with laughter y'all. I can't with this man OMG. Jisoo has also been doing a Q&A on her IG, she says you can ask her anything and she'll respond, so if you have any questions, be sure to check her out on Instagram. Harem has been giving tips to single moms about staying healthy, and she recently talked on Instagram Live, answering questions people had about her. She mentioned some things about her approach to relationships and these are some of the things she said. Harem explains that she's an action-oriented person. She likes to show her feelings through actions more than words. She said her initial intent was to focus on one person, establishing a strong relationship with that person. She said she was immediately attracted to Ricky, which we all obviously saw on the show. But she lost interest after the one-on-one -on -one tea time date with him, and felt she may have misread their situation. Then she decided to switch and choose Dewey until that night after the job reveal, when Dewey and Benita talked outside for a long time. She felt that Benita and Dewey had a good connection going on, so she backed off. This, according to her, was why she decided to go back to Ricky. Take a quick listen to what she said. When I first started this show, first of all, my personality is that I'm very action-oriented. So when I first started the show, my intent was that I want to focus on one person at a time and one person intensely because you know, we can have coffee dates, we can have chit-chats outside of the show, right? But this is Cancun, this is tour singles, baby! So, I was thinking that, you know, when I go there, I really want to invest myself heavily into one person. Not multiple options, but one person. I was really ready to um, be the best of myself, I guess. Sorry about the background noise. So, when I got to Cancun with that in mind, um, I was really hoping to find somebody that I could be really deeply into. And when I first saw Ricky, I was very interested in him. So I thought, okay, I'm going to focus on this person here and now and take out other options. But when I had tea time with Ricky, you know, the chemistry was very off. And I thought, all right, this is not what I imagined it to be. And surprisingly, actually, Dewey and I had such great chemistry that I thought I had misread my, you know, situation and so I was thinking that so I was thinking that all right the Dewey is my man you know I'm going to focus on Dewey um, 100% and so I you know being the very intense and single task focused person that I am I was looking for somebody who is also going to be just focused on me so when I um, actually was doing karaoke by that time me and Dewey had already established quite a bit of a back and forth. So I was thinking that we were going to probably match. And then this is where the funny thing happens. So Dewey and Benita actually go out during karaoke to talk to each other, right? And I wanted... Um, so I was thinking that they were actually going to match because a lot of time had passed. I had actually gone to look for Dewey after karaoke. And um, I, had, I had gone to look for Dewey and then he was still with Benita. So I was thinking that they are going to match. So I wanted to respect whatever progress they were making so it could flourish on its own without my interruption. So that's actually why I backed out and then I went to think in my room and I was thinking, how, what am I going to do here? My first pick, Ricky, and I had a terrible chemistry during tea time. And then uh, Dewey is now doing well with Benita, so I, I don't know who to be interested in anymore because I don't want to be, I don't want to consider multiple options, right? After I saw the show, 
I found out that Benita was actually helping Dewey to connect with me further. And so, you know, this is like where the mismatch of fates happen, yeah. right? If I had known that, I would have, you know, gotten to know Dewey a bit more. But because I thought that Dewey had, you know, switched from me to Benita, I wanted to respect that and I backed out. That was how I was kind of respecting that. Comparing what she said to what was shown on the show, I'd say some of the things she said matches while most of it isn't adding up. In episode 4, after the job reveal, Jerome started his karaoke with Harem and Jimmy Wright. Then after they realized that others had gone out to chat, she and Jerome also stepped out and settled somewhere close to Benita and Dewey by the pool to have a chat. So in this sense, it matches up that when she saw them she felt they were connecting. But what doesn't make sense is that she is on a dating show where they are all meant to chat with each other. So her saying she withdrew to give them a chance because of a chat isn't adding up. And besides this, she complained to Jimmy that she felt a little sick earlier when they were sitting on the couch after the job reveal. Dewey asked her a question and she snapped at him that she wasn't feeling well making him uncomfortable and changed his seat. You could tell that by this time she had already made up her mind to move on from Dewey, Dewey felt her energy and changed to another seat. If it was someone she really wanted, she would have tried to talk things through with him, so just like she cut off Ricky initially, she also cut off Dewey, the only difference is that she went back to Ricky because he became popular amongst the ladies. If she gave up on Dewey because she felt Benita was interested in him, she should have also given up on Ricky when Sora showed interest in him right? I'm not saying I am right or that I can read Harem's mind, I'm just stating my observations as things aren't adding up. Man, um... So I, that's why, actually, you don't see me going from my room directly to go to Ricky on the second floor in the game room. You see me going downstairs looking for Dewey, and then I come upstairs, and then I go, okay, let's give Ricky another try and get to know him better, and then I um, go to the game room and then get to talk to Ricky. So, so in that kind of way, actually, Ricky and I were a good match because he and I were both very intense people where we focus on one person at a time and just like all in on that, right? So in that way, we were a good match. But it wasn't, you know, I mean, it wasn't because I saw Ricky's profession or something and then I switched over or um, because I thought Soda liked him and I wanted to boost my ego. I'm not that type of person. It was really that I'm just somebody who just acts, and then if I fail, I fail. But I'm just a very action-oriented person. Next, she also talked about why she cried so much before the child reveal. She said she was misunderstood and that people thought she was ashamed she had three children. She says her kids are her greatest gifts and that she had been uncomfortable that they were not allowed to share this detail earlier on the show, although she appreciates the show in that way, so everyone can date freely. But she didn't like that she had to hide this information from the person she liked. I agree with her on this one, I knew she wasn't ashamed of her kids but she desperately wanted to be chosen for the cohabitation stage. Because it seemed her major goal was to show the struggles of single moms, and she needed to make it to that stage, since that would be her selling point as she gets famous. She confirmed this belief of mine when she said she revealed her messy house on air because she wanted to be authentic about the struggles of single moms by being an example for them on TV, that it's okay to be messy and not be perfect. This was why she needed to feature in this cohabitation stage, being a person whom single mothers can relate to is her niche. Like I've said in many of my videos, I don't really care about her messy house because in real life, lots of homes with kids even with both parents can be that messy. But what puzzles me is her choice of Ricky, knowing he was quiet and wouldn't change, yet she still chose him and the question is why him. Their relationship was the most fiery at first, but it was the first to cool off. To think that Ricky even mentioned on the show that falling too hard too fast was a problem that had always been his downfall. All in all, thanks to Harem for trying to bring clarity to the questions. Now, we can all move on. Wow, it's amazing the kind of lessons we learn while watching these shows. Anyways, it's been months now and Ricky has clearly moved on, this is the latest video of him in Temecula Wine Country, and he sure looks good and enjoying the beautiful scenery while tasting wine lol. Can't wait to see his first interview on YouTube. Now let's shift gears to Sora.
With Sora's passion for cooking, we should expect some cookbooks from her in the future. I've definitely learned a couple of tricks from Sora's kitchen. Check out what she cooked for her friend during her visit to Sora's house. He, Jean and Jimmy have recently shared some throwback pictures of when they met each other's parents. And his first trip to Vancouver, where he got the chance to connect with Heejin's nephew and they also helped run a food truck owned by Heejin's friends for a day. The great thing about this couple is they're both on the same page and rumors of their wedding happening next year in June of 2024 are floating around. I know I've heard this rumor here and there, but I do not have confirmation about this yet, but to keep up with this sweet couple, you can now follow them on their YouTube channel called He Jimmy. We hope for the best for all these incredible individuals. They really gave us some happy memories on that show. The couples that matched have taught us the importance of taking the time to get to know your partner well before falling too hard in love. Having deep conversations, and even when you both do not agree, you can both find common grounds with each other. Thanks for watching, hit the like button and subscribe if you want more content like this. Bye.